Hello, I'm Vicki Hogarth and welcome to the special edition of Southwest Magazine. In this episode, we have offered equal broadcast time to each of the four candidates running in the December 10th municipal by-election in the town of St. Andrews. Up first, alphabetically, is Kate Akaji. Kate, thank you for joining me on Southwest Magazine. Oh, you're so welcome. Can we start by having you tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I was originally born here I, and on Indian Point, which is at the other end of town. Um, I've raised here all my life, um, lived here. I'm still living on Indian Point, which is my family property. So I'm still there. And I taught school for 30 years here in St. Andrews. Um, I've been, uh, and lately I've just um, working at New Brunswick Community College a couple of days since I retired from teaching. So I'm um, the Indigenous student advisor there. So I've embraced my culture there, my Indigenous background, because my family background is Canadian, Japanese, my father was, and uh, Native American, my mother was First Nations, so um, Pes Pescatomacati. So I'm quite a mixture, but I've, I've lived here all the time in St. Andrews. So uh, born, bred, and raised here. I went to school here. I graduated. I went to university in New Brunswick. And then I came back and settled into teaching and have settled my life here. You were a counselor before. Yes, I was. I was counselor and I was also deputy mayor. Okay. So um, I was on two terms. First, I was on as a counselor. And then the second term, I became deputy mayor. And then this past term, I tried to run for mayor. and. Doug Nash won, so um, I thought, well, I'd like to get back into it. So. And what is it about 2018 that inspired your return? Well, because I want to know what's going on, but I also want to um, be involved in the town, um, you know, town commitments or whatever they're doing. Um, I'd like to be involved with the people again, like I miss that kind of interaction, so I, that's why I want to go back on. What do you think are some of the key issues facing St. Andrews right now? Well, we've got the climate change and that's always going to be the big thing because we live on the water. We're going to have problems with it, right? Because it's rising and, uh, you know, more storms than we normally have. Um, we've got um, aging population. So we've got that problem with uh, where, you know, the health center, all of those things. So those are things that are key to me because I'm getting older, not mm -hmm. getting any younger, that's for sure. So I want to be involved in, you know, helping to to form those and, and to assist the senior population. Not that I would forget the young people or the, you know, the baby boomers, but um, I think we have, we do have an, an, an aging population that I like to see um, get, you know, be involved with. What do you think are your strengths and your experiences that make you the ideal candidate? Um, well, I think I've lived here all my life, so I, I know the town fairly well. I know the history. Um, I think I know most of the people except for the new young people that have moved in because I'm not teaching anymore in the school. But I'm involved in the community with, you know, um, anything that goes on in the churches like the Anglican Church or my own church, the Catholic Church, or even ecumenical things. So I'm very happy to be involved with that. Um, I'm involved in a lot of organizations in town, mm -hmm. um, the archives, the library board, um, dial a ride, you know, Charlotte County Alternative Transportation. I'm involved with that. Um, I do try to help out with the food bank sometimes, you know, with the, you know, when they ask for things and and we do a lot of things at the Passamaquoddy Lodge or um, any of the thing, any of the events that are going on, I try to be involved in. Like I did Canada Day for so long, I think I was an icon with it. But I, you know, I just now have stepped back because it's, it's run by Tressa and she does a great job. So I do help out if I'm here, but this is the first year that I think I went away. <laughs> <laughs> Took a break. But I do try to help in, in all events and whatever's going on in the town. Um, that's what one guy said. He said, I've seen you all over the place, like Minister's Island. I go out there, and, and uh, so I'm quite involved. Uh, before voters head to the polls, what are the key points of your platform you'd like them to remember? Um, I'd like them to remember that I, I would like to hear from them and understand their position, what their, their concerns are. Um, I'm certainly for the town because I love it here. Um, I wouldn't have lived here all my life if I didn't love it. I love the people, I love the community, I love 
the fact that everybody works together. And that's the, the key thing that I want to work on, and I want to work on some things that are happening in St. Andrews. What would your message be to voters for um, getting involved on, on this level of uh, po town politics? What would you say about encouraging them to vote? Yeah, I would say get out and vote, because I mean, we need everybody to go and vote. If you want to have, you know, have the person in that you would like to communicate with, then you should get out and vote and vote for that person, whoever it is. We've got four, three other good candidates and myself, and I'm hoping that, you know, well, I know they're going to pick one, so I think it'll be a good one, no matter who it is. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Next is first-time contender Charles Creaser. Charlie, welcome to Southwest Magazine. Thank you for being here. Yes, it's my pleasure to attend. So let's start off by you telling me about yourself. My name is Charles Wyman Creaser. Um, I grew up in New Brunswick. Um, my background in, uh, in work is I'm a union millwright and I'm still employed at that through a union hall in St. John, New Brunswick. I've been living in or around St. Andrews most of my life, which includes the islands of our region, Grand Manan, Deer Island, Campobello, and Blacks Harbor. And for a period of time, I had my residence aboard a 85-foot uh, uh, Bay of Fundy herring carrier that I bought and that was a former Connors Brothers boat. It was built in Blacks Harbor. And I turned it into a home and sort of a mini museum. And I, in the summertime, I would leave this area and I would travel to other jurisdictions like Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. I went down to Newport, Rhode Island to the Wooden Boat Show. And it was kind of like a one-man show where I would open up my boat, people would come on, and I had a few displays. One of the more popular ones was a display that I had received from the... Um, the Roosevelt uh, uh, Pavilion in Campobello Island and that was very popular because people were able to make the link <clears throat> between our area and the significance of having uh, the Roosevelt uh, grounds on Campobello Island. So that was really interesting. And now I'm residing here. I have a home at 116 King Street on, uh, in the middle of town and people will probably see that it's under some uh, repair. Uh, I'm fixing the foundation and I've jacked it up. And while that's in process, I'm living at the Windsor House Inn, so I'm having a staycation <laughs> in our own town. It's great. What do you think are some of the most pressing issues facing St. Andrews right now, if any? Well, or, I'm, or for instance, what got you to want to run for, for a councillor? Well, I knew that there was a by-election coming up, and uh, I have been involved in some things uh, with uh, union politics, which I call. And uh, I thought it would be an opportunity to serve on our council and serve governance in our uh, community. There's issues that needed to be discussed and uh, voted on, and uh, it's part of the governance that's mandated by our province, that our town has six councillors and a mayor, and I wanted to be one of those participants. Mm -hmm. Do you have a background in politics? Not really, no, but I'm at an age where now I have time to focus. My family's grown. I raised four children, um, and I have the time and the interest in my community to be wanting to be participating in the governance of it from, from month to month. What would you say are your strengths, um, your experiences that make you an ideal candidate? Well, I find that I think my age is, my age demographic is good. I've still got a lot of time left to work and, uh, and also I'm interested in, in uh, young people because I have young children myself and I'm interested in our community and what it looks like going forward from today. Uh, it has a very interesting past. And because of my travels uh, with my boat, I was exposed to a lot of other people's ideas about what they thought about our region and our, our community. What would you say then, um, if you were voted in, would be some of the pressing issues that you would want to address right away that you hope came to the table that, that you would be a, a voice for? Well, I see that the governance of our town is a collective of people that are elected at large. There's no specific uh, demographics for where, what people or voters you're representing for the area of the town. So we're at large, the council is at large. And the council at large, I think, in its mandate, uh, from what my understandings are, is to do uh, what the wishes or move towards the, uh, the wishes of the voting uh, populace inside the town limits of St. Andrews. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's going to be a broad spectrum of interests, uh, both past, present, and future. And that's mm -hmm. going to cover all of the things of interest that people bring up in day-to-day -day talk. What's wrong with the deer population? How are we dealing with summer parking? 
what are we going to do going forward for housing for workers that we need to help run our business in the summertime when the cost of, of uh, housing uh, goes up because of our influx of tourism and and those are things that help our business and that also helps the citizens and also can create jobs and opportunities to bring more uh, business to our community and mm -hmm. it is a summer resort and has been for a long time but it's also been an active community with a fishery and a lot of other diverse things that make it a great community to live in. Mm -hmm. Before people head to the polls to vote, what are the key points of your platform or things about you you'd want them to remember when they take that into the voting booth? Well, I think that because I'm not as well known as some citizens and some of actually the people that are running, um, I would like everybody to know that I plan to live here. Uh, I enjoy living here. I've lived here both as a, as a homeowner and a, as a renter. Um, I like to think that I understand th some of the, the uh, attractions of our town and we also support an outside uh, region which a lot of people are living in that like to come into St. Andrews from great distances and I think that uh, I won't get a much of a chance to do any uh, campaigning as such mm -hmm. but I'm quite approachable and if people need to come and talk to me they can find me usually at the Windsor House Inn. <laughs> I'm, uh, I follow the mayor in his circle, the current mayor in his circle to uh, Honey Beans and now there's another coffee house that's open so and uh, I'd like people to approach me if they recognize me and introduce themselves and if they do have some concerns or things that they wish me to know are concerns of theirs about our upcoming election that they would introduce themselves and uh, find me to be uh, you know somebody that would listen to what they're ha what they have to say and uh, try to understand what some of the, the the current things that people would like to have addressed as town citizens together uh, coming up if I was ever elected to be a councillor here. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining me, Charlie. It's been my pleasure. And good luck M next week. Maybe we'll see you on Election Day. I'll probably see you at Honeybeans before that. <laughs> thank you. Just a reminder to voters, if you have any questions on the voting process, visit electionsnb.ca. Up next is candidate Patrick Mann. Pat, thank mm -hmm. you for joining me on Southwest Magazine. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, tell me, let's start off by having you tell me about yourself. Oh, okay. Well, um, Lizzie and I, uh, discovered St. Andrews on a motorcycle trip. Uh, Lizzie and I did a lot of motorcycle touring and uh, we uh, came through here, a, rec a friend recommended we check the place out and we, it was about 2002 and I think we were on our way to Cape Breton and so uh, we liked it. Where were you coming from? Montreal. Okay. I, I'm originally from Montreal and so uh, Lizzie and I um, really liked it and so then we go off to run around the Cabot Trail or whatever we did and then we We'd come back east to do Newfoundland. We did the whole coast of uh, Nova Scotia and uh, part of New Brunswick. And every time we came east, we'd either stop in um, St. Andrews on the way in or St. the way out, or sometimes both. And so then it was, um, we were talking about you know, my retirement and then we said, great, we're gonna move to uh, St. Andrews. You know? And so we moved to St. Andrews. How long ago was that? That was in 2012. Okay. And, uh, and so from there, um, because my background is in communities and uh, I quickly got involved in the, you know, the community here and uh, I um, was, uh, I got, <laughs> I, will go to, I go to a, uh, a meeting about Canada Day, you know, I figure, okay, I worked on Canada Days back in Montreal. And so I go in there to you know, volunteer for something or other, I walk out as co-chair. And so, you know, so uh, <laughs> I was co-chair of the uh, of the event. I ran the parade and got involved with the arena board. And uh, so it was a, uh, um, it, w it was really interesting getting involved in the town so quickly and everybody was very welcoming and warm. And uh, then I was, uh, 2014, I guess, I was approached to uh, run for council in a by-election, which I did, uh, which I won. And so... Uh, you know, that was kind of neat too. And then, so I got involved in the whole council thing. And uh, I, uh, one of the things I sort of very proud of what, during my time on council is that I was very supportive of the Anchors Landing Project, the seniors apartment building. And it was a bit of a battle, but uh, you know, we got it through and it's been a terrific, ex a terrific success. And, uh, 
that uh, proves that these kinds of facilities are needed and more facilities I think of the same type or similar type are, are needed in the community because there is a, uh, a, house, a, diff you know, a diff housing situation in the town and many people young and old you know, uh, who work here can't find suitable apartments in which to live. That, uh, so that's uh, that's one of the, I suppose, one of the key issues you think facing the town. Yeah. Is that yeah, what, what you say that. are the key issues that have drawn you into running this time for well, council? Well, I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, the, in 2016, the uh, general election came up, and I was considering running for council at that time, and I didn't because my wife Lizzie was uh, about to undergo some uh, major surgery, and I felt, uh, you know, my first, obviously my first responsibility is, is to her, mm -hmm. and uh, so I was going to be needed to sort of uh, look after her during this whole uh, recuperation process, and so that is why I didn't, uh, didn't choose to run at the 2016 uh, um, 16 election. I knew that uh, I wouldn't have the prop amount, proper amount of time to devote to the, uh, the council job. And, uh, um, and oh yeah, the other thing I want to mention is that um, the, uh, the current council, none of, the, none of them were elected. They all came in by acclamation, mm -hmm. except for the mayor. There's, there was an election there. Um, but this time around, uh, we're very fortunate that we have uh, four candidates for, for the post. And uh, uh, it sort of shows a sort of maybe a, more of a healthy interest in, uh, in, the, in the municipality and in the council's uh, proceedings. Um, would you say housing is one of the key issues for you that that you would like to address if you became a councillor this time around? Yeah, it's uh, one of the issues. Um, there's a, a number of other issues. Uh, let me get to Do you my have time. Yeah. Let me get <laughs> to my <laughs> issue uh, page. Um, the okay. One of the things is that we um, the town is. Um, fortunate that they have a, a very good uh, infrastructure replacement program, maintenance replacement, and they've got to continue doing that because mm -hmm. that's the backbone of the town. You've got to um, um, really uh, make sure that all the infrastructure, all the uh, infrastructure assets are, you know, in decent shape, they're maintained, um, and uh, that needs to continue. Um, I also think that we should reduce the amount of red tape. Um, for uh, to encourage development in the town, to uh, for address housing the housing shortage or other sort of new ideas, um, we need to also um, encourage more transparency uh, from the council and staff. Uh, I complained at the council meeting that the simple issue of not advising the public about coming uh, council meetings uh, in a clear manner, and the council listened, and this resulted in the new town notices uh, uh, notice board being erected in front of the town hall. But the biggie for me is the health center. Um, the, uh, uh, it was discussed, I think, privately in council for a year or so, maybe more than that, um, when it suddenly came out and they were, the council was considering moving the health center to a place just sort of outside of town, if you mm -hmm. want to call it that. Um, and it took a room full of citizens to finally convince the council that they wanted the opportunity to speak about the location of the new health center. Um, the, uh, the council uh, reacted and had a very well organized public forum which attracts about 150 uh, citizens and it was very clear that the vast majority um, of the residents wanted the health center to remain at its present location. Um, there had, you know, f a couple of months ago, there was a proposal in which the town would gain access to the Legion site uh, for the health center and the Legion would be accommodated in the W.C. O'Neill Arena complex. This seemed to be a reasonable proposal, but there has been very little or no public follow-up uh, with this issue. Um, so I want to ensure the health sta center stays in its present location or at a suitable spot in the town plat. Um, really, in my opinion, the health center um, needs accommodation for two doctors, um, some suitable location for, for um, visiting specialists and you know, blood and these kinds of things. So it's, uh, um, I really believe that uh, you know, we're only a town of 1,700 mm -hmm. people. So we, you know, we need the spots for, the, you know, for that uh, and it needs to be in the, uh, in the health center. Well, thank needs you so much town. for joining me and informing the public about what you stand for, Pat. Good luck next week. Thank you. Finally, I caught up with first-time candidate Brian Usher. Brian, thank you for joining me on Southwest Magazine. Tell me about yourself. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I guess where I'd like to start really is the, the reality is that most people 
in town would not really know who I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it really comes down to answering the question of why are you here? Who are you? You know, that's we hear it frequently. Um, the thing that really, I guess, it comes from the Maritimes is that whole notion of you're from away. I'm from away. Right, I you're understand. from away. Yeah. Okay, and that, in that sense, it, the worst interpretation of that is you're not one of us. Okay, and so in an election. The, the real need for me right now is to reach out and let people know who I am and how I can best represent them mm -hmm. in that regard. The question about why am I here, why St. Andrews, the number one thing that both my wife and I always refer to is the people. Mm -hmm. We traveled through St. Andrews on a vacation mm -hmm. several times and the quality of the interactions with people, uh, people stopping you in the street, talking to you as if you're a long lost friend. Uh, that kind of said an awful lot to us. And what we basically did is we traded Niagara on the lake for St. Andrews by the sea, okay? So we had the same pattern coming out there. Um, the decision for us, we had to have confidence that where the risk was worth taking. We had to move a publishing business, Arabella Magazine, mm -hmm from an Ontario marketplace where we had all our connections to St. Andrews, feeling that, well, we can make it all happen. And a lot of it was to do with infrastructure. That, uh, St. Andrews has high-speed internet, mm -hmm. you know, and it has access to airports so that we could travel quite quickly to wherever we needed to go. Okay? And ultimately, it came down to having a special sense of home, okay, that we really wanted to find a place, and we communicated this throughout the magazine, we're looking for a town, a place, which gave us a sense that this is home. When you drove home, when you went in the house, when you met people, you felt like you were a part of things. So that was really why we came to St. Andrews. Okay? Um, the issue with being from away is this perception that people from away come here to change things. Okay, there, there's a sense of, well, yes, but we need to do this better, mm -hmm. change this. And there's no question that, you know, or doubt that that makes people feel like, like what we were suffering. Uh, so it, it's not like um, it's well received. Uh, we tried when we came really to focus on how do we fit in socially. Mm -hmm. uh, we made a point, w we're not six months here and six months in Florida. We're here 12 months of the year. So we endure all of the pain and suffering that goes on in winters, but we actually enjoy all the social life that's, that's a part of the town, okay? Uh, I'd say we have some complaints, but no, no different than most people mm -hmm. would really have in that regard. Most people would know me primarily, well, Arabella is one, the magazine. The other is Minister's Island, mm -hmm. in that when we came here, I got involved as a board member, then I became co-chair and then chair, and recently, as of April of this year, took on the role of executive director. And I stop at that point and really say to people, even though we're involved in changing Minister's Island, the key is it's not in the town, so I'm not changing the town in that regard. Um, what we were trying to do with Minister's Island was build on the heritage and the passion that the membership of Minister's Island has for the place uh, as some place of serenity, but at the same time, they see it as some place for celebration, mm -hmm. for what the town has for William Van Horn, for his role in actually building St. Andrews. So by keeping Minister's Island going and, and giving it a higher place in, in the overall audience that's out there, we think really we're celebrating an awful lot which of which it, the f core thing is St. Andrews and its history. The potential from Minister's Island really is the economic growth that's likely to occur. We can be proud of it, but at the same time, what we've done as a board is look at creating a business plan that helps develop the island, secure funding, and at the same time, create anywhere from about 40 to 48 full-time equivalent jobs when everything is finished. Uh, so that's the key thrust. Uh, if anyone wants to know more about Minister's Island, this is my little plug for it. <laughs> There's a website, 
uh, which is ministersisland.net. Um, just I mentioned this as I'm going to hold this up. This is the growth of attendance hmm. since 2011. So you can visually see we're increasing, the last one being 2018. So we're really moving ahead in terms of attracting more and more people to the island. What do you think are some of the most pressing issues facing St. Andrews right now? Okay. Well, given my work on the Chamber of Commerce and the new uh, steering committee for the regional plan, the overall sense is, in, is sustainable economic development is, is number one, I would emphasize. That's balancing uh, economic growth with social and, and environmental issues. Number two would be affordable housing and growing a population. Those two things have to relate, they mm -hmm. come together. And then the other piece that is important is how we tell our story. Uh, we got great publicity last year for you know best place to visit, but I think we have to be more proactive in mm -hmm. terms of promoting. Uh, it would be ideal if the council took a more extended view, looked outside just of St. Andrews, mm -hmm. and looked at how we can promote and bring more people mm -hmm. into the area. Those are the key things. Uh, there are a lot of other small issues, but to me they're shorter term. The key issue is that we start looking at longer term issues. What are the things that are going to make the most impact for us four, five, six, ten years down the road? And the ones I've just highlighted to me are the most important thing. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Brian. Okay. And good luck next week. Thank you. Southwest Magazine is a news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.